This is Snivy. And right now in Poke Rogue, Snivy has one of the most broken movesets paired up with its ability Contrary. For those that don't know, Contrary is an ability that makes stat changes have the opposite effect. If you take a look at the moveset that Snivy has for his egg moves, you can probably see where I'm going with this. In this video, we're going to do a classic run with Snivy and show you just how broken this Pokemon is. Yo, before we begin, if you guys can do me a quick favor, please like this video and sub to the channel. Your support really does help motivate me to create more content just like this. This video took me around 50 hours to put together and I had to stop streaming for 3 days just to finish it. Thanks guys. Alright, to start things off, let's create a brand new classic run. Here, we're going to select Snivy and make sure that we have everything in order for the starter. The main ability that Snivy has will be Contrary. This is Snivy's hidden ability that makes stat changes have the opposite effect. That means if something normally gives you a stat boost, it would instead decrease those stats and vice versa. Looking at the egg moves that Snivy has, they're extremely powerful moves with the drawback of them lowering specific stats. However, with the ability Contrary, the move actually benefits you instead. Throughout the run, we'll go into more details on this moveset, but for now, let's discuss the rest of the build. When you have enough candies, you can unlock the passive ability for a Pokemon. This is like a second ability that can be activated at the start of a run. Each Pokemon has their own unique passive ability, and for Snivy, it's multi-scale. This ability decreases damage taken by 50% if the user is at full health. This would be crucial to prevent Snivy from taking excessive damage during battle. The next is going to be the nature. Snivy, even in his final evolution as superior, has a balance of both physical and special attack. You can opt for whatever it is that fits your playstyle, however for our build, our main movesets are all special attacks so that means we need a nature to accompany that. We have a choice between either timid or modest, I decided to opt in for timid to give it the extra boost in speed. Superior is relatively fast in general so this will only raise the stat higher. And with that, this will be the build we're going with. I also need to make it clear that this is not a challenge run with specific restrictions. I'm going to start with Snivy just to showcase how this build works, but I'm just going to play classic mode as I normally do. I'll catch Mons here and there and use him in a party if necessary. However, to keep it educational, I'll make sure that Snivy will take the lead at least 95% of the time. If you guys do want to see an Iron Mon run where we just use one specific Pokemon to be classic, definitely leave it in the comments below with some suggestions. So with that said, let us begin. Allow me to demonstrate the ability of Contrary. We have a fairy move here called Fleur Cannon which lowers the user's special attack by 2 stages each time it's used. However, thanks to Contrary, our special attack increases by 2 stages instead. Do you see where I'm going with this? What if I told you that Snivy has 3 other moves that does something similar and that these stat buffs actually carry on to the next floors? Throughout this run, I'll break down the importance of each floor and give you guys a play-by-play -play as we progress. We start the early floors by taking only X items to give the passive boost to the party. For double battles, we make use of Make It Rain, which is a unique move introduced to us by Goldingo. It's a 120 power adjacent foe hitting steel type move that not only deals incredible damage, but works just like Payday. Spamming his move will passively generate us money as we progress. On floor 5, we get our first trainer battle. Whenever you reach a different biome or battle an NPC, these are considered instances, so all stat buffs and debuffs are reverted back to default. That means to sweep the team, we'll have to rebuff Snivy with either Fleur Cannon or Make It Rain. After the battle, if it's not shifted to another instance, we can just proceed with the buffs retained. Floor 8 is going to be our first rival battle with Ivy. She'll have a random starter from one of the 9 generations as well as a flying type mon. Our biggest weakness here will be a fire type, but lucky for us, she starts with a pop Leo. We end the battle by obtaining a super EXP charm and EXP all. On floor 10, we run into our first boss mon, which is Pidove. Boss mons are much more powerful compared to their counterpart, considering that they have several health bars and passive abilities. However, since we retain our buffs, we can easily one-shot this guy no problem. After every 10th floor, we get a free party heal and proceed forward. We now move towards the plains and encounter our first double trainer battle. They sent out two steel type mons, so our first option here is to use flamethrower. After they're taken out, we can make use of make it rain. Floor 18, we run into Meowth and Chansey. I think it's time to get a second party member on the team, so we're going to catch Chansey. We receive the map, which is a key item allowing us to choose which biome we can go to. On floor 20, we run into Boss Badoof, and shout out to this guy because he's what allowed me to capture my first Eternatus. Hey, we made it to the lake, and this gives us a chance to run into Magikarp. Snivy evolves into Servine here, and we meet our rival again on floor 25. Her team has now evolved to the second stage, but it should be no problem for us. She does have a third member in her party, which is Cryognal, but its only existence here is just to give us free money. We take the victory and move on to capture a Magikarp. We also ran into a Wartortle that I tried to catch, but it was just being too stubborn, so he has to die. 
Here we have the option to learn Mega Drain, which would be a good stab move for Snivy, and also a passive way to heal during battle. The tough part is that we have to decide on which move we're taking out. I decided to remove Flamethrower here since its only use was mainly against Steel types. When it comes to other types Flamethrower was effective against, I'm fine with just using the rest of the movesets we have as neutral damage. Being able to heal whenever we need to will be much more important later in the run. On floor 30, we encounter our first gym battle against Crasher Wake, who mainly uses water types. But since we have a grass type move now, it should be an easy sweep. We end it off with Magikarp evolving into Gyarados, and then proceed onwards to the construction site. So this biome is similar to the dojo, we'll run into a lot of fighting types here, and all we have to do is spam Flur Cannon and pick up the items that we need to boost our team. Oh, I also forgot to mention, but this run takes place after the Team Evil update. That means we're going to run into NPCs like Team Rocket, Flare, and Plasma, just to name a few. I actually feel bad for the people struggling with Classic right now, because with this update, they made this game even more challenging for them. Luckily for us, this Plasma Grunt doesn't have anything that poses a threat. We go on to clear the upcoming floors until we reach a double boss battle with Machop and Conkodor. Poor Chansey though, it's her first battle and she immediately dies. On floors 41 to 50, we proceed to the power plant. Nothing interesting happens here besides Servine evolving into Superior. At the factory, Superior learns Giga Drain and we take on our rival for the third time. Her starter is now a Primarina, so is a Dual Water and Fairy type. Not sure what the AI is doing here because they keep swapping out, so it's basically a free win for us. But look, she has a baby Axu, that's cute. We carry on until we face off against our second gym leader, Byron, who mainly uses Steel types. Uh, yeah, I kinda wish I still had Flamethrower. But yeah, we should still be okay with only using Superior here. Just get the buffs we need and spam Giga Drain. And with that, we clear floor 60 and move forward. We return to the planes and let me tell you, I'm not sure if my luck just sucks, but we run into three Plasma Grunts back to back back. And then right after that we get a double trainer battle. We also have the option to learn Leaf Storm here which is the grass version of Floor Cannon. As much as I want to learn this move, we have no other way of healing during battle right now. So if we pick up some Shell Bells or something, I'll consider relearning this move in the future, but for now we'll just have to pass up on it. Ending off the biome, we encountered a boss Norlax which I immediately captured and added to the team. Okay, we made it to the Metropolis. Never mind, we're at the slums now. We find a wide lens to increase the holder's move accuracy by 5, and a fairy feather to increase fairy moves by 20%. We defeat the trainer on floor 87 and take on the third gym leader, Pears, who leads with an Incineroar. Okay, hold on, guess who didn't heal Superior back to full health? So we can't use multi skill here, we're gonna have to try and tank a Flare Blitz. I don't know why my HP was glitched there, but Superior managed to survive one attack thanks to clinging scales, boosting our defense by one stage. Since it took some recoil damage from Flare Blitz, we can just repeat the same move and take it out. For the rest of the team, they're mainly Dark type, so all we have to do is just spam Flare Cannon and this will grant us our third victory against a Gym Leader. Alright, back to the construction site. We find our rival in rematch for the fourth time. This time her Primarina is Terrestrialized, which honestly doesn't mean anything. She does have a Hisuian Arcanine though, which could be deadly, but since we were able to build up our stats before it was sent out, we were able to take it out, including her now evolved Haxorus. We have two rival battles remaining later in this run, and those battles will be much tougher than what we've faced so far. At the dojo, we were able to pick up two remaining wide lens, so now Superior has three held. That means that all moves are increased by 15 accuracy, but maxes out at 100. We defeat the trainer in his biome, as well as the boss Metacham, and proceed onwards to the plains for the third time. Okay, we made it halfway to the run, so I'm gonna start sitting up now. Okay guys, prepare yourself, because we're gonna get hit with an influx of battles with Team Plasma again. We face off against not one, but two grunts back to back until we're challenged by the one and only Plasma Boss Getsus. Getsus. Get this. Get these nuts. Okay, but for real though, this guy is going to be a tough battle because he swaps out Runa Regis with a Volcarona and we honestly don't have a way around it. I tried this battle multiple times now and there's probably like 20 minutes in this recording where I just try to find a way to get around this Volcarona, right? And the only solution to it was just not leading with Superior. So if this was an Iron Man run with only Superior, we would have just lost right here. But luckily, as an assurance, we do have the rest of the team. So with the help of everybody else, we move forward victorious. Okay, we're chilling now, so I'm just gonna lay back in my chair again and finish off the rest of the script. The final battle in this biome will be against Gym Leader Chili, who uses Fire types. As long as we're able to give Superior the boost it needs, we should be able to win even against a Fire Terror Volcarona. We are back at the Metropolis, let's pick up a Reviver Seed to give to Superior. This is probably one of the most important items in Classic since it basically means an instant revive if something goes wrong. We acquired a Mega Bracelet on floor 125, a Candy Jar to increase additional levels from rare candies, and lastly, catching a Rev Room to add to the party. 
Okay, we're skipping floors 131 to 140 because nothing interesting happens there. But here at the con site, we catch extra drill to add to the party. And this guy's going to be the most important member of the party. Even more important than Superior. I'll tell you guys why later. But for now, at floor 145, we face off against our rival once again. But this time, she immediately flexes on us with her rare shiny Rayquaza. I would feel threatened by this, but since we have floor cannon, there's really nothing to worry about. Even Hurricane isn't strong enough to take us out. We break through the three health bars and proceed to sweep the rest of her team. Oh, and she's even so nice to give us some free heals too with Primarina. Carrying on, we find a Mega Stone for her Gyarados, so now I am officially a proud owner of a Mega Gyarados. Anyone else? On floor 150, we battle Gym Leader Watson, who, to my surprise, used Electric Pokemon. Who would have guessed? But nothing notable happens here. It's just another day, or should I say night, for Superior. Okay, but maybe running into Watson had some meaning because at the power plant, we encountered a Reggie Eleki that was easily taken up by Superior. No guys, I'm kidding, we caught it. Okay, so the reason why Extra Drill was so important is because we needed to remove it in the party to make room for Reggie Eleki. We're here, we made it to the factory and face off against Team Plasma Boss Getsis for the final time. However, this time he immediately leads with an Iron Moth. I swear in all my videos, this guy's existence is just to make my runs a living hell. So just like before, there's no way Superior can take this guy out, so we'll just have to swap it out with a different member of the party. Oh, did I forget to mention that this guy has a freaking Kyurem as well? I do have to say though that this is probably the toughest fight we've faced so far. And honestly, if I didn't have a broken mon like Superior with all the abilities and egg moves, I can't even imagine how tough this battle would be, especially for beginners. Alright, let's wrap things up here because that's all that's left until we make it to floor 180. Our final gym battle will be against Chili once again. But prior to that, we managed to pick up a Quick Claw in the previous floors, so the 10% priority could definitely come in handy in some situations. But not against Chili, because the fight ended before it even started. Now, the next floors are my favorite part of Classic. Here, we will face off against the Elite Four and Champion of any of the nine regions. And it looks like for us, we're going to be going against the Alola region. The first one will be Hala, which mainly uses fighting types. This one is simple, just spam Flare Cannon, and we win. Next, we have Olivia, who specializes in rock type, so all we need to do is boost our Spatak and use Giga Drain. The third Elite Four is Acerola with a party of ghost type. Pretty spooky, huh? But not spooky enough for Superior. This fight's gonna be an exchange of neutral damage, but since we have the ability to boost our stats, we just win. The final Elite Four is Kaili, who has the typing advantage against us since her party consists of flying Pokemon. This is probably the most damage an Elite Four member has dealt to us, but even with the disadvantage, Superior was still able to solo. Now we're faced off against a champion of the region, Hao, who actually uses a variety of typing in terrestrialized Pokemon. His main threat is technically the Lunala, which has Shadow Shield. It's basically the same ability as our multi-scale, but even then, like before, Superior just solos the team. Woohoo! Finally here, we have reached the end, literally. This is where Paradox Pokemon exists, so we have to use this time wisely and get as many X items as possible for the next battles. At 195, we face off against our rival for the final time, and this battle is considered by many to be the hardest fight in the game. This time, her Water Terror Primarina has three health bars, but ignore that, because she now has a Mega Rayquaza. Our Floor Cannon can only take down one health bar, and there's no way we can survive a hit from this guy, so we're gonna have to switch it out. Alright, Snorlax, get in here. Okay, see ya, Snorlax. I guess we can try Chansey now, throw up a quick light screen for the team, switch off into Gyarados, scare away the Arcanine, and take down one of the health bar on Rayquaza. Okay, let's take it easy here. Rev Room has not seen any action so far in this run, so let's give this guy a chance to cook and do as much damage as possible. Ray heals multiple times with the Citrus Berries, but becomes confused right after. So our rival is going to switch it out for the Primarina. Rev Room did his job, so we can now safely swap back into Superior and get started on cleaning up. Crystal Raptor has a Revival Seed, but even with two lives, it's still not enough to take us out. We're now maxed with a plus six special attack, so there's nothing left for us to worry about. And with this, we defeat our rival once and for all and move on to the final challenge of the run. This is Eternatus, the final battle and the strongest Pokemon that we'll face. If you're not prepared, this is where your run will end. We have to make it through the first phase by bringing Eternatus down to its final health bar. After this, it will transform into Emax Eternatus, and now the real battle begins.
we're down to the last members of the party but Eternatus is also down to the final health bar so you know what that means get in my balls and with that we clear classic securing another victory but this time by using Eternatus Okay, that will conclude our showcase of this build with Snivy. I hope that this was educational and that you guys got some value out of it. Again, if you guys like this type of content and wish to support me, you can do so by liking this video and subbing to the channel. And with that, I'll see you all next time. Take care.